Okay, let's get started. Uh, good, e good evening. Welcome to the, uh, the Davos Experience in Tokyo, Series 2015. This is the first session of this year, and I'm very happy to welcome all of you. My name is Yoko Ishigura. I've been hosting this event over the past two years. And as you can tell, that's a live webcast. So this is what's taking place in Davos. And you can take a look, and you can sort of figure out. And you can, you can watch from uh, your PC or uh, smartphone anytime. And uh, since I think it's like, uh, let's see what time. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning there. So in the evening, you can watch the whole time. Pretty much, and there's so many webcasts available, and uh, that's um, so you we, without going to this uh, Davos, which is very cold <laughs> and has a lot of snow, you can watch here, and uh, so that's that's what you could do. But as I said in my Japan Times uh, article, I think the best part to me in Davos or the, the World Economic Forum is to have uh, breakout sessions and brainstorm. And that part is not shown on the webcast. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what I would like to do in here. And so I would like you to think about and to express your views, and I would like you to develop new ideas and new uh, you know, uh, breakthrough ideas and so forth. And this year, we're going to have three groups of uh, sessions. That's our plan. We don't know whether we can really follow it every three times or not. But the, the, the one that we will have today is a sort of special session. We'll have a guest, and we'll talk about something of uh, you know, an issue. And another one, which is going to take place in February, February the 20th, and you'll be able to, you, you can see the, the brochure later on, is much more of fun type of things. So we want you to have fun. So come up with some crazy ideas. And if you, we have a technology or we have some product, but we don't know, we have no idea how to sell it, then we would like you to think about how, how, to, how to do that. And the third group, that's the, the second group, the third group is uh, collaborate with the corporations. So we'll try to collaborate with the corporations. So we will usually, we are likely to go to their office or their venue and think about their issues with the people who are there. So we would like to have some external outside views of uh, fresh ideas for the, the issues that the company is faced with. We tried this type uh, probably twice, three times last year. The first one was uh, ANA Blue Wing. The second one was Vanessa and all uh, aging and technology. And the third one was the, the, the one in November that was Triumph International, how to build the, the female confidence. And we went there and with all those brochures and uh, intimate wear, we talked about how to um, build the, the confidence. So those are the three, type of, three types of sessions that we plan to have. So we, we plan to take turns and so forth. But um, that's, uh, that's our plan. And we would like to have as much of a variety as possible and we're also trying to reach as many people as possible. So if you have a very good time today, make sure you talk about, about that with others so that they will come. How many of you, this is the first time? Okay, that's, that's very good. That's usually the case. About half or a little over half are the, the, the first timers. And it's very nice to have these combinations. So the first timers, you may be a little bit nervous, but this is very easy, very no risk whatsoever. You can you can say anything crazy, but nobody will remember tomorrow because uh, we'll have a lot of beer later on. So everybody will be drunk and don't remember a thing tomorrow morning. So don't worry about it and try to use this occasion as a place where you can just kind of do what you always wanted to do, but were afraid to do. So uh, that's, uh, that's our plan. So feel at home, have fun, and enjoy. And this is, uh, I think they are now talking about the corruption. 
an earlier session was, I think, about the, the infrastructure and Gordon Brown, the former uh, Prime Minister of uh, UK, is, uh, is always there. But you can take a look at these things. But today, we are very happy to have a special guest. That's uh, Dr. Ken Endo. And he's a young global leader of the World Economic Forum. And also, he has done an ex um, exceptionally good presentation at TEDx Tokyo last year. I was just watching, and I was very, very moved. And he has been uh, well known to a lot of people, and he has done a lot of things. And he is a, he's a CEO and founder of Cyborg. Uh, that's a company that he set up. And uh, he's an engineer, as he calls himself, but tried to do a lot of things uh, with uh, his technology. And if you have, uh, we are talking about the joy of movement, joy of locomotion. Once you are not able to walk, or once you lose some ability, I think that really limits a lot of things. And that really uh, affects your psychology as well. And you may have some friends or family members who suffer from that. And, or, and another thing is that the, as we age, we usually lose the ability to walk. And it's, it's quite um, amazing in many ways. I have a 93-year-old father who used to walk very fast, so nobody was able to catch up with him. But now he has a lot of trouble walking, so he uses the walker, but that really limits his mobility. And so for, not only for the, the disabled, sort of quote unquote, or the, the people who lost the, the legs or whatever, I think the, the aging is very much related as well. So I think uh, what he has been doing is, uh, is a great uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, so uh, first of all, let me welcome him. And after his presentation, we would like you to break out into several groups. And we have uh, certain topics for the, the, the groups. So I'll explain after his presentation which one is which. So you can go to anyone that you like. OK? Any questions? OK, with that note, let's call uh, Ken. Hi everyone, so uh, and it's very honor for me to be here and I appreciate you all for inviting me in, inviting me to this event and very looking forward to chatting you guys after this talk. And today I'd like to talk about the physical disability. So I my, if I uh, disabled, I would like to make my body. So in that case, so I call my project Hack the Body. Sometimes uh, you might think this is um, inappropriate to uh, to call my uh, technology because the hat. Has some, uh, okay, so hat has some negative meaning sometimes. So we play around the computer that we call it hat. So we uh, we some uh, in some sense we play around the body parts. So that's why. Uh, and some people might think this is inappropriate. But I guess this is my challenge to uh, make the great technology for uh, compensating the physical uh, capability. So let me start. I'm sorry, body. Body. Yeah. It's typo, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> now you remember my project. <laughs> and then let me start introducing my history. I was a roboticist when I was an undergrad student, and I was very interested in making the robot because the, uh, I'm just curious to make something move automatically using the computer mechanics and the software devices. But 
uh, back in 2000 to my, one of my friends, best, my best friend, lost his leg because of his uh, knee joint cancer. And after several time of the metastasis, I realized that I wanted to do something for him. More specifically, I really want to make a leg for him. And when at that time, I met Professor Hugh Herr. He is the professor working in the MIT Media Lab. And actually, he was making the robotic ankle for himself. And I'm very inspired by his work uh, shown here. There's no such a thing as a disabled person. There's only physically disabled technology. In other words, if we could have a uh, perfect technology which can compensate the physical capability in a comprehensive way, there's no physical disabled person. I'm very inspired by his work, and then I decided to go to MIT Media Lab. And I uh, got a PhD two and a half years ago. And I came back here in Japan and started to work on the same topic, but in different uh, approach. And so uh, when I start to uh, say physical disability, so this is the, just a condition of the body. The opposite term of disability is, I guess, ability. Ability is some of our capability to do something. But in all the other hand, disability is the something which prevents the person from doing something. And so why the human is defined as a disabled person? From my point of view, there are some uh, three categories. I will uh, explain why I'm thinking of three categories important. At first is society. I will say this shows the environment around us. We often walk going up and down the stairs, and also often uh, grab the strap in the train. They all designed for the intact person who has two legs and two arms. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you lose some parts of the body, you will be inconvenient to do anything. So uh, uh, another, uh, another example of the problem of the society, the insurance coverage. So we all are uh, protected from the government, but we all have the insurance coverage. And that can cover 90% of the protected cost. And then we can purchase the protected limb for a uh, very low cost. Sorry. So, and, but the disabled person can only one set of the prosthesis for every five years. There's only one leg. They cannot uh, buy the secondary one, even though it's very expensive. So that uh, constrains their activity. So there's a bunch of the problem around our society, which is not uh, great for the disabled person. Another thing is the individual. So as I said, the society, the environment around us is designed for uh, uh, for that person. But from the point, uh, from the disabled person's point of view, so he cannot do something which the intact person can do. So they, the per, uh, individual might think he is disabled more than actual uh, reality. So that the difference between intact and disabled person make him more disabled person. On the other hand, from the point of the, uh, from the intact person point of view, if you have some uh, family member who is disabled person, you might think this is not big difference, but you are not uh, get used to seeing the disabled person. You might think we are different. We cannot we cannot handle such a situation in appropriate way. So uh, this makes the difference between the disabled and intact person bigger and bigger. Another uh, problem about the physical disability is technology. This is my part, and I'm an engineer. So I try to uh, make the problem uh, lighter. Or I would say we need to solve the problem, but I guess the my pro my duty here is to make technology which uh, 
enable the disabled person to do more. So, uh, for example, he is a disabled person. He doesn't have two ankles, and but he has knee joints. In our world, in our country, we have the technology to uh, help him, which is the prosthesis. For example, he is using the two kind of pros uh, two prosthesis, but this is the composed of the one uh, pyron plus uh, carbon fiber leaf. So you might think he can walk easily, but it's very hard to walk on the prosthesis limb. He needs to use more metabolic cost energy than in that person. So this makes him disabled as well. If we could have the perfect prosthetic limb in a uh, in comprehensive way, he might not be a disabled person. So there's some uh, technology like this in different fields, which is the eyeglasses. Eyeglass is a very great example which augment the human uh, eye power to enable the enable the person to look at something. Moreover, society accept that technology because the, I can see a lot of the people wearing eyeglasses, but we don't think they are disabled person. Society accept it. That we are we don't think the difference between the person with eyeglasses or the other person. So I want to make something. Uh, like eyeglasses in prosthetic technology. So moreover, if the people want, it might have the uh, longer prosthetic limb, which enable disabled person to run faster than the that person. He might not think the disabled person, but this might be reality in the future. So I'm very excited to look at this kind of situation, hopefully near future. So uh, you might think he look he loses his leg and he might be unhappy. But I can see a lot of the margin between the digital link and ground, and very excited to see that margin where we can put any kind of technology. So that's why I'm very interested in and working on this work, this uh, research field, and I, can, I will introduce what I'm doing in three topic. So this is my approach to solve that problem. And a first a robotic process is this is the more uh, academic technology, uh, academic approach. The human human needs some huge muscle to push off the ground. So we need to mimic that behavior. But the uh, current technology is just the passive one. I want to make it uh, active using the motor. So I won't I won't go deeper in this field because this is more academic one. But I guess it's very hard to make the ankle active using the motor because that technology makes the ankle heavier. That's one problem. But this is the one technology I'm developing right now. This pure technology might solve the problem. The another problem is the uh, uh, disabled person in the developing country. More than half of the disabled person living in the developing country and more than half of that are living in a rural area of the developing country. So in that case, a lot of people cannot reach out any technology. So they are living without any technology. So just, they are just living in a crash, as well as they, or without any technology. There are uh, a lot of problems beyond the uh, technology. So uh, when I went to India for the first time back in 2008, I, I saw a lot of people working in this kind of poor technology. They cost about uh, 2,000 or 3,000 yen. And so I wanted to make it better, but there's a bunch of the constraints. For example, there, the Jaipur Fruit is the, our partner. They are running the business just only based on the governmental support or individual donation. And that got, that's the money, get, they get money from the government or the individual and they purchase some, uh, uh, some material from the local company and manufacture by themselves and provide the profit limb for disabled person for free. So my duty is to make the uh, prosthetic limb, better prosthetic limb without breaking this uh, business cycle because the uh, director of this com company uh, 
they don't want me to uh, change any business model at first. So uh, constraint first is the, the profit needs to cost under 300, 3,000 yen. Also, uh, profit profit clean needs to uh, be close to the uh, natural uh, human leg. Uh, some of you might uh, find out that they he's living, uh, walking on the profit clean with a very poor looking. Uh, he is working on the pylon with the foot. But they really care about the appearance of prosthetic limb. So they need to want, they need to have a prosthetic limb, prosthetic limb which is looks like an actual leg. And also, uh, knee joint is not stable at all. So my duty, another duty is to make it functional. So a lot of knee joint during the stand space in the, in the release joint, release the lung. Uh, during the swing phase. So this is one example of the clinical study. So I need this to I need this to use the local local material, local manufacturing system, and keep to need, in order to keep the cost of the prosthetic prosthetic limb low. And after some uh, time of the clinical study, I found that a lot, a lot of people uh, looks very happy. So when I working in Japan. I didn't see any person who looks happy like this. So I guess the people in the both company, company need more technology than the developed, developed country like Japan. So last uh, approach what I'm taking is the athletic prosthetic thing. And this is the final uh, competition on 200 meter of the Paralympic game of the London. So you might know the Oscar Pistorius. He is the uh, first athlete joining the Olympic game in history, but he lost in the Paralympic game. Yeah, it's very fast. And so I think a lot of people think Oscar Pistorius won will won the game because he is the first athlete joining in first disabled person who competed in the Olympic game. That he lost in the Paralympic game. This indicates that technology innovation and those athletics of the uh, athlete is getting better, improved and improved. And this plus shows the winning time of the 100 meter for the Paralympic and Olympic game. They are uh, getting faster and faster year by year, usually. And currently, world, world, Olympic, world record of the Olympic game is about the, uh, the 9.58 seconds done by Mr. Seinfeld. And by the way, Paralympic game, the Alan Oliveira, who won, who uh, defeat, defeated the Oscar Paspi series, made a world record of the 10.59. It's about the one second difference between wow. them. Yeah, but recently, the, uh, the athlete of the Paralympic making progress, and the innovation of the technology and athletics Direct me one idea that the Paralympian might be able to defeat the Olympic game in the future. Yeah. Hopefully, we want to make it happen in 2020, hopefully, in Tokyo. So that's why uh, I launched this uh, uh, company named the Cyborg. Uh, more specific, specifically, I, we made a track team with the uh, uh, one athlete, Dai Tanesue, and the one designer, Ami Sugihara. He is very uh, good at making the carbon fiber prosthetic limb. And we are now, we have a three athlete, they are uh, top three athlete in Japan using the prosthetic limb. And we are targeting, of course, the gold medal for the Paralympic game in 2020. And of course, we want to uh, 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 have the one, ath one Paralympic athlete who can defeat the intact athlete in the Olympic game. That's our goal. And but moreover, I want to see what happened when the disabled person defeated an uh, intact person. Because the, usually, uh, the, in reality, we are thinking the Paralympian is always slower than Olympic Games athlete. But I want to make it change. And I want to see what happened, what, what we start to think of the disabled person in the future. That's our intention. 
And currently, uh, this is our situation. We made a uh, severe prototype and the hour after starting to use our prosthetic limb. And hopefully, we will have the World Championship in October. And that will, that will be the first competition we are participating using our prosthetic limb. And the, finally, so uh, currently, we have a very clear boundary between the intact person and disabled person. Uh, that only based on the physical condition. If you lose it, your uh, part of the body, you will become the disabled person. It's not all about your uh, activity, activityness at all. And but we all disabled, I guess, in some sense, because when we are getting old, we are losing the functionality of the body. And the, if you are, uh, for example, um, uh, if uh, I were in the Africa, I don't think I can survive. But in that case, I will be a disabled person. So it's all about the uh, uh, problem, body function around the society and development will change based on our situation. And what I'm doing here is uh, uh, making the color of the disabled less and also putting another color beyond that person. I want to make some technology which enable person to go across the cutters. And finally, I want to see the work with a bunch of the diversity of all our uh, human, uh, human capability of the body. So that's what I want to see in the future. And then I want to make some technology to enable him, enable any kind of person to walk uh, run and also feel some enjoyment of the uh, locomotion at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I think it's, uh, it's very impressive and uh, I like the idea of no person is disabled and I thought it was a very, uh, the glasses are a very good example because in a way we're disabled because we, we have to, we can't see very well. But glasses are taken as a, as a fashion item, even. So it's nothing, you know, nothing different. So I think it's, it's great, it's a great example. And what we would like to do now is that, uh, to break you up into several groups. And I have uh, sort of selected the topics. And if you don't like the topics, you can, you can move around and so forth. But uh, uh, let me, before we break out into uh, uh, different uh, groups, how many of you have seen uh, Ken Endo's TEDx Tokyo video? Not too many. Okay. That was what I was afraid of. It's, it's very, it's about uh, 10 minutes or less, right? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. It's about 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's really very impressive. And I also posted the video of TED of uh, Hugh Herb, yes. and uh, I also mentioned he talks about how he became disabled and how he started this research at the first part, and then he talks about the, a lot of technical stuff, and at the end, he introduces the dancer, the lady who does dancing, but he, she lost her leg because of the Boston uh, Marathon. Well, and MIT students and to her maid, her um, uh, prosthesis. And she danced at the end. It's really, really moving. So uh, I suggest that you take a look at it. I think a lot of people just kind of cry. But anyway, um, uh, about the, uh, the, well, Ken would be around uh, to ask, to answer questions, but the, the topics that I thought about was that Okay, these are the, the business sort of in the developed countries. You know, how to make sure that the, the, you get uh, people, you get uh, his product in the developed countries. And I think there, are, there may be two, and probably can help, can, can help you how to go about it. And those two are sort of developing countries. You know, how do you make sure that you, you start spreading or making this thing available to the people who really need in the developing countries. And at the same time, I think we have something as a public in the society 
what are the kind of things that we could do just to make sure that we, all of us, believe nobody is disabled? So make these things like the, the glasses. What are the kind of things, what are the handicaps, what are the mental uh, blocks that we tend to have if we see any disabled person, quote unquote? We may want to help them, but we may be reluctant to do that. So what are the kind of things that we can make his dream of there is no distinction between intact and disabled uh, happen? What are the kind of things that we could do as a, you know, in, in the society, as a regular people? So those are, I just kind of said uh, three groups there because that may be something that you can think about. And there are four in here. And I think we have about uh, 35, 36 people or so. So each one can have uh, probably like five or six or whatever. And what I would suggest is that you go to any, any one of the groups and quickly introduce yourself. Don't spend too much time introducing yourself because I would like you to think about the ideas to make this, you know, this society that can visualize this as a reality in many different ways. And if you want to call Ken uh, for some questions, specific questions, please do so because he would be around, I hope. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? Is it clear? Okay, and uh, you can take turns. If somebody wants to take the lead of the discussion, that's fine. And if you are the first timer but would like to lead the discussion, see how it goes, you are welcome to do that. Don't let people who have been here take the lead, okay? <laughs> this is the place where you can, you can try and you can give it a try. And some people do talk a lot, but just don't, <laughs> don't let them do that. And at, after about 45 minutes or so, I would like each group to report back what they have come up with in a very brief, you know, easy way. And then we'll have a general discussion. Clear?